Hello and welcome to the third video in the Ardu Pilot on Cheap and Cheerful Flight Controller series. Now we have done quite a bit so far in the very first video I talked about the intention and the aim of this series and we looked at getting the firmware onto the flight controller. Then in the last video in the series we spent a bit of time doing the basic setup, making sure things like the GPS and the external compass and the receiver all working, wired everything up and made sure it was okay outside of the aircraft. Now in this video it's time to pop it into the airframe. I'm going to be using a little AR mini wing here and then go through the final setup. Now looking at the content I've got to cover in this video, I'm not sure what I actually get to fly. I was hoping to in this video, but we have quite a bit to do here to go from having all these individual components on the desk to having it all set up, ready to take out to the field for the maiden flight. And I've hit a couple of uh, little snaggets, I think I'll call them, where I just want to go through those. So if you're doing the same thing and following along, you don't fall into the same traps. Uh, I've probably spent about four hours doing the stuff that's going to be condensed, hopefully, that we're going to cover in about 15 minutes in this video, and it'll save you a ton of time. So the first thing we need to do is start in physically installing all the parts into the actual aircraft itself. The first thing is to pop the GPS into the wing. Again, I've cut the foam and it'll sink into there without too many problems. Running the cables underneath. I've also pulled the ESC out just to see how it's all going to go together and making a little bit of room. But now we've got the ESC out, I'm also going to remove the covering from this. I didn't really have to, just to see how all the cables are going to run. Because the wiring that we need to think about for this thing is all covered in the Ardu Pilot Wiki. So if you go in there, there's a fantastic wiring diagram showing you how everything connects together. So all I'm doing is just following that. So I need to make sure that the battery is coming onto the battery pin and that the ESC is being connected to the output. Now, one of the cool things about the Sonic models is they do include a little JST plug that's there to power the video transmitter. This wing already has a video transmitter and a camera in it, so we're going to change the bits and pieces for that, the wiring, so that that works with the Ardu Pilot on-screen display as well. But for now, let's just worry about doing all of the power pieces. So this is how it looks with all the power pieces installed. So hopefully now I have power coming in from the battery. I have it going out the right pad onto the ESC. And I've also taken the power from the ESC side and also the ground, which is underneath a common ground, which all the wires connect to for that JST plug. So I can still power the video transmitter stuff that's working fine. Now the next thing we need to think about then is how we're going to wire up the video transmitter and the camera. Now the only thing we're actually really worried about here is the video in and the video out and the ground wires. And again, it's all covered in the manual. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to break apart the cable that goes from the camera to the video transmitter, have those going in and out of the respective pins on the omnibus, and I'm also going to take a ground pin as well from the ground wire that goes between the video transmitter and the camera onto the omnibus, and I'm going to do all that with just a little cable that will allow me to plug everything in. Now, once I've done that, next job is to make sure that I haven't made any hiccups, uh, do a visual inspection of the wiring, make sure that everything that I've just done isn't going to make the magic smoke come out, put a multimeter over the pins on the power input, for example, make sure it's a dead short. Uh, just do one big final inspection, make sure the ground wires are going to the ground wires, the signals are going to the right places, that the ESC and the servos are all plugged into the right outputs as per the way it was configured in the last video. Now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to just plug it in and check that the control surfaces work okay. So we're going to select manual mode on the radio, we're going to power it from the battery and then we're going to also plug it into mission planner so that we can change things around. So the idea with that is that in manual mode we move the controls on the radio and because we've set it up for right and left elevon on the model itself it should be working fine now my left one is working fine my right elevon isn't working great at all it's actually reversed for both directions so all i need to do is in the servo tab click reverse and then that should be working fine and that has fixed it and while i'm in there i can also set the midpoint and the travel as well to make sure that the control surfaces aren't being overdriven 
Once I'm happy with that, next job then is to put the model into fly-by-wire A mode and to rock it side to side and put the nose up and down. And I'm looking for the corrective movement that the flight controller is doing to try and maintain straight and level flight and double check that that's working. As the wing comes up, you should see the elevon rise and as the nose goes down, you should see the, both the elevons rise to try and pull the nose back up to counter it. Triple check that that's okay and mine's working perfectly. Now we've got all that done, it's time to set up the on-screen display. Now this has been changing quite rapidly, so uh, it might be slightly different if you're looking at it, because I'm recording this video uh, very, very end of April, beginning of May. So by the time you come to it, it might be a little bit more sophisticated. But what we need to do now is just to make sure that we can get into the on-screen display and have it all set up. It's a lot simpler than it used to be. It used to be quite complicated and you have to have I know, kind of a, a manual XY coordinates and you have to set them up through this very complicated interface. These days, it's a lot more simple. All you have to do is go into here in the menus, find the onboard on-screen display, set it to one, reboot the flight controller, and when it comes back, the on-screen display will burst into life and then you can start to configure it. If you go back into that tab in Mission Planner now, you will have this wonderful graphical interface. You can decide what you want and you can drag and drop it. You can also decide on the font you want to use and all the settings are still reflected back in the full parameter list or the parameter tree, but it's just a much, much nicer way to set it up. Very similar to how iNav, uh, Vector and Betaflight do it. So props to the RD Pilot development team for making this an awful lot easier. This is one of the steps I wasn't looking forward to if this graphical OSD wasn't here. Now I've got that set up the way that I want it to. The other little trick is I would put the plane level on the desk that you're using, put the nose up a little bit so it's in a flying attitude. With FPV planes, you tend to find that the camera's designed to look straight out when the nose is slightly up. So put the nose at that attitude, put a little battery or something underneath, and then calibrate the level just like we did last time. And then you should see when it's in that attitude on the desk, the horizon in Mission Planner is exactly in the middle. And that means hopefully when it flies, it is gonna sink or rise it's actually going to fly straight and level that might need a bit of tweaking when we come back but it's going to be hopefully good enough for a first flight now to talk about the last stuff now trying to get this thing to arm uh, probably gave me a good couple of hours of fun now to arm an rd pilot flight controller you hold the throttle at the low position and the rudder to the right position and that once it's held there for about three seconds should arm the flight controller so what you need to do is make sure it's powered plug it into mission planner and then have the basic screen on there with the artificial horizon in the top left hand corner because it will tell you exactly why it won't arm and surprise surprise i'm getting lots of different errors and that's entirely normal there's a couple of little features i guess you'd call them in the software where so let me go through the ones that i've had and then hopefully it will mean that you don't catch them first one is mapping data error and um, i didn't have an sd card in my omnibus i didn't think i needed it but one of the things that mission planner will do when you connect it up and you look at uh, the mission planning stuff is it will download all of the terrain data onto the sd card it doesn't take up much space at all i'm only using a little two gig card in this and it's fine uh, but make sure you have an sd card installed and that mapping data will be pushed across automatically you don't have to do anything it's just when you're in the map part of mission planner you'll notice the little text screen that sits behind it you'll see all this map data suddenly being copied Second problem I had was I had lots of errors around RC uh, conditions not being right. And what this is, if you do a search online, uh, this is a bit of a weird, wacky one. And I didn't expect it to have it on here because I've seen it with other Pixhawk installs where I've installed over the top of an older version of Ardu Copter or Ardu Plane. Um, but it has happened here. So what it is, is all of the channels that haven't been calibrated as part of the radio calibration. So in my case, that's uh, RC 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16, the trim values is less than the minimum value, and that's causing an error. So just go into the full parameter list. You can search for the RC 9, RC 10, whatever it is. Make sure that the trim value is more than the minimum value. Minimum value is going to be 1100, so I've set my trim for 1200. Make sure that you hit enter so that it's green. Then once it's green, 
hit right, so that's copied back to the flight controller, and work your way through there, and that should get rid of those errors. Next problem I had, trying to arm it, it was telling me I had a bad logging error. Now, the flight controller is going to be saving some data onto the SD card when you're flying, and those logs are useful to look back if you have a problem later on. Now, I was initially using a 16 gig card, uh, and the terrain data and everything was working fine, but it wasn't working with the logging. So what I did, I replaced it with a much smaller two gig card that I'm using now, uh, formatted it in a PC for FAT32, plugged it in, uh, copied over that terrain data just on the PC, and then plugged it back in, fired it up, and that fixed it okay with that as well. So that's another problem out the way. Last couple of ones are slightly weird and wacky. Uh, the first one is that um, I was just trying to do it on the desk without having my radio turned on and the flight controller wouldn't complete its boot sequence when I had my radio off. I think it's probably because the flight controller is seeing no pulses from the receiver and that was causing some kind of fail safe or something weird and wacky to happen. So to make sure that the flight controller booted and I've also installed a buzzer and I'd recommend putting a buzzer on any flight controller that you're using in a plane with RD Pilot because the tones that it produces and the successful beep tones are exactly the same as the kind of stuff you'll hear on a Pixhawk. And if you're used to Pixhawk, it's very familiar. That little trilling noise it makes when it's happily booted. And also the eh -eh noise it makes when there's an error is great. It's just a little audible signal that something is right or something is wrong. But just make sure that the radio's turned on, the receiver's nice and green and bound, and it should boot fine. And the last one is when I first powered it up, of course, every time you're doing anything on the bench, when you're going to be plugging the battery in, make sure that you have the prop removed from your model. Um, I found that the motor was just twitching and spinning. Now, the ESC calibration is something we could go through. Uh, the ESC calibration through Mission Planner uh, is a little bit hit and miss in my experience. So all I've done for the maiden flight is I just went into the servo tab and just reduced the minimum value on the throttle output just a little bit so that it was below the level where the motor's going to turn. So when it's sat, um, it's not going to be running the motor until I increase the throttle. Once I've done all that, I could put the throttle stick in the lowest position over to the right rudder and hold it there for about three seconds and it would arm beautifully and then everything was working, the motor was firing up, I could have everything in the on-screen display, the GPS was locking, we're good. So, quite a lot covered there, but hopefully that shows you it's relatively straightforward, setup is very simple, just follow along with the stuff in the wiki, but now we're ready to take it to the field and give it the first couple of test flights. Again, make sure we have manual mode, make sure you have loiter, make sure that you have fly-by-wire A for that initial flight. I've also tweaked mine so that I can get a return to home there as well, so that we can try the whole thing. So join me in the next video, we'll take it to the field, and we'll actually see if this works as well as I hope it does. Thanks for watching the video and watching right to the very end. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you like the video and like what I'm doing here, then hit the subscribe button and hit the bell notification icon too. If you really like what I'm doing, you can go the extra mile and become one of my Patreons for access to me directly for support and also giveaways and regular updates too. If you're looking for particular content, then check out the playlist. I organize all of my videos into playlists, so if you're looking for a particular topic, you can find everything here. If it's called Introduction 2, it's designed to start very simply and build on that simple introduction to teach you all about it. If it's called For Beginners, then that is really aimed at people who are brand new to that part of the hobby. You can also search on YouTube for anything that you're interested in using the search function at the top. So iNav Painless 360 will find all of my videos and even the playlists around iNav. So thanks again for watching and happy flying.